I'm frequently asked to help folks evaluate properties either from the perspective of maybe buying, leasing, or developing a hunting plan. My number one tool to do this is an Onyx map. I can gain a lot of information about the property and the neighboring properties by using this resource. I want to share a few examples of what I'm looking for when I evaluate a property. In this case, I'm looking at 20 acres in northeastern Missouri. I start looking at the features here, I notice there's a valley just right off the road on the west side of the property. And a pond right here, and other ponds scattered in the area, so water is not a concern. Food is the next resource I consider. And I zoom out a little bit, I see some ag fields in the distance, but near neighbors to this property are primarily timber and some cattle pasture. Turkeys can be attracted to cattle pasture, but they're not a great food source for deer. Timber can be a source of acorns, and deer will definitely use acorns when they're available, but that's not a guaranteed food source. I'd rather have a food source I can count on, especially on the property where I can hunt. Zooming back in, I get close. Well, I can tell the difference between the big oaks and hardwood trees here and what is primarily cedars on this property. Cedars can be a great visual screen and deer may use them for cover if there's nothing better in the neighborhood. In this case, it looks like we got a closed canopy forest and cattle pasture, so I assume some deer are using these cedars. Within the more mature cedars, I would go in at strategic locations and create some small hidey ho or hunting size food plots. Simply fell some of the larger cedars, drag them out of the way, you can leave the stumps right there in place, Use a herbicide or prescribed fire, even a rake, to get rid of the existing vegetation. There won't be much under those cedars. Then you can hand broadcast some seed and create an attractive area for a hunting location. Hideo food plots are small. They're not feeding. They're not designed to feed a bunch of deer, but rather attract deer and put them in a location for a good shot. Considering this property and the surrounding habitat, I think it has some great potential to provide awesome hunting opportunities. This property is a little bit larger, it's about 60 acres, but has some similar characteristics than the one we just evaluated. A lot of timber around it, but it's a different type of timber. These are all pines as this property is located in Georgia. So I zoom out and look around. When I look at this one, it's primarily timber all around it and no ag in sight. These openings may look like ag, but they're clear cuts that have not been reestablished with timber. Knowing that, I know right off the bat, food is gonna be a very limited resource in this area. So I know I need to focus on providing quality food to make sure deer spend at least a portion of their day on this property. This property is laid out nicely in that it has a section of pines here, one in the middle, and a larger one on this end, sandwiched by hardwoods, hardwoods, and hardwoods. Pine trees are managed as a cash crop in many areas, and knowing these are pine trees, I'm hopeful we can do a small harvest in there and create some openings to establish food pots. Knowing I have that tool in my belt, I'm gonna make a bigger food plot here that's gonna work to pull deer from this area. One right here on this high spot, I like making food plots on the highest elevation on a property because the wind will be more consistent on those high areas versus down in the valley. Food is by far the most limited resource in this area, and more food is going to attract more critters. Maps allow me to not only study the resources of the neighborhood, but maybe consider additional opportunities. Knowing that food is short in this neighborhood, I see the neighbor has what appears to be some abandoned pastures, a lot of brush growing up in there, and I'd probably want to approach that neighbor and ask if I could lease that land for hunting and establish big food plots in those abandoned pastures. Let's take a look at another 60 acre property, but this one is in a totally different habitat type. There's no pine trees here, and this area tends to be a lot of hardwoods that have been high graded over time and open cattle pastures. On this property, there are no existing openings. It's kind of steep all around the edges and fairly flat right in the middle. It can be tough to approach hunt and exit these type of properties because when it slopes off each side, the thermals are going to be swirling almost any direction you try to approach. But there are some hidden features. There are a couple of pinch points that might not stand out at the first look. When I zoom in on this one, 
I see the topo lines making a sharp bend right here. There's a gully going down this steep hillside. Now deer could go through it, but they don't want to. And this one's even better than most because there's a road on this side. Deer cross roads, but they don't want to spend a lot of time there. So most of the deer are traveling up and down through this big block of woods in their neighborhood going to go right around the top of this gully. Another advantage to this is it's facing west, so it's going to be out of the sun for longer in the morning. You can put your stand right at the edge of the gully with confidence, especially on a cool morning. Your scent is going right down through there where deer are not going to be traveling. This 60 acres is going to hunt great. A lot of my buddies lease land to hunt and typically means they can't do a lot of habitat improvement projects. This example is from the Midwest. Now, who doesn't want to get a tag in the Midwest and have a good place to hunt? Let's say this is where you're hunting. And again, we zoom out and take a bigger view. Well, gosh, there's ag all over. Probably some monster bucks in this area. And on this property, a little creek drainage coming through here. It's pretty narrow. All of a sudden, you hit the biggest block of timber all around. We look at these squares. This is a mile square. So this is clearly the biggest block of timber for quite some ways. Zooming back in and knowing my objective is to place stands where deer are going to be traveling. I'm looking at it and thinking, okay, not much cover here. All the cover is diving in here. Well, deer most likely are gonna go this way or this way. Midwestern land tends to be very flat, but thermals are still a factor. And I can see a creek going right through here. So I know when it's cold outside, air is heavy and it's going to the lowest point and you can bet it's going right to the creek it would be a great option to put some stands right over that creek hunting deer as they pass by. I mentioned earlier that on most leases, you can't do a lot of habitat improvement projects, but probably one of the best projects you could do on this property is work with the landowner and get them to leave a little grain standing in a corner of one of these ag fields. And then you have the best cover and the best food in the neighborhood. Who doesn't want to hunt there? As a review, I start studying any property where I can hunt by locating the sources of water, food, and cover, and that includes in the neighborhood. Even if these resources are on adjoining properties, they may impact how deer are traveling through the area I'm allowed to hunt. I look for opportunities to provide or improve water, food, and cover. That may be as simple as using hack and squirt technique to allow some more sun to the forest floor and allow natives to grow to planting food plots. Most importantly, I don't take any of those actions until I have a plan, because the plan needs to include how I'm going to approach, hunt, and exit the area. Using a map is the first step to having a great hunting season.